Fred Film Radio. I'm Matt Micucci from the 76th Venice International Film Festival, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Jon Fan. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. And you're presenting the film number seven, Cherry Lane. Yes. Um, so it's lovely to meet you and talk to you about mm -hmm. this film, which I yeah. saw last night and loved. But for the benefit of our listeners at home, would you mind maybe just introducing it a little bit so that we can talk about it in more detail? Yeah, this film is set in 1967, Hong Kong. Mm. And uh, that is uh, a turbulent time in Hong Kong. Because in 1967, you have uh, the big riots and Hong Kong was almost falling apart. And then during this period, and then you have a love of the fallen city and then a love between a mother, daughter, and uh, a school teacher. Yeah, so that's simple, but sounds simple, but love is a complicated thing. Right, and also in this particular structure, it's particularly problematic. It seems like it's a particularly problematic love triangle. I think it's very original. Right. <laughs> the yeah. original is a, a good word, right. because it uh, sounds conventional, but it's original. And for this film, you uh, decided to work with animation. Now, mm -hmm. what was this choice? Why was that choice? When did you decide to make that choice? I think that uh, this is not animation. I would not say this is an animation film because animation is only a technical word. Mm. I would say this film is a motion picture. And when we say a movie is a motion picture, yeah. so this is a motion picture that uh, uh, the, uh, many of the pictures, paintings, and then the moves around with uh, the story, the film. Yeah. So you have uh, the styles of uh, um, classical Chinese paintings, you have styles of uh, uh, French Impressionist, you have styles of uh, uh, pop, uh, pop art uh, like uh, Liechtenstein and all that, all mixed up together and then makes this uh, number seven cher cherry lane. For the, that is for the visual part. And also for the music part, you have classical music, an orthodox music, you have street music, you have Chinese opera music and all that mixed together. So actually you put all those contradictory ingredients together in one movie in Chinese cuisine we have uh, this type of uh, cooking but this cooking in the Western you call the chop soy means everything mixed together right. but in the Chinese we have another term it's uh, Buddha over the wall that means this dish is so good it's creme de la creme even the Buddha smells of it would jump over the wall to taste it. So I think this movie is for the audience to decide. I love that. I also love the fact that you define this film as a motion. You put the emphasis motion on the word picture. motion. Yeah. It makes me think of energy. So uh, a lot, another energy that I feel is a, is a, works as an engine in this movie is sexuality. I think that it's almost like an ebullient energy. Uh, would you agree? Yeah, I think that uh, the sexuality is very hidden, but it's very strong. Yeah. You don't see it very much, but you feel it. I think that is uh, a good part. You can see it and feel it. Yeah, and also, I feel, okay, so this, this is a historic, <laughs> this film feels like a historic film for many reasons. Yeah. One of them is that it's, it's the first Hong Kong movie in competition in Venice for a while. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's great that it's all, it also feels like a love, uh, a love letter to Hong Kong and it has yeah. been defined like mm -hmm. that too. Yeah. Is that, is that, would you define it as also as a love letter to Hong Kong? That is definitely a love, a love letter to Hong Kong and also a love, love letter to the cinema. Yes. Because in this movie that you have a lot of, uh, um, a I mean, a lot of uh, hidden riddles uh, of the uh, Western cinema and the Chinese cinema, even Wong Ka Wai. So you have uh, kind of uh, everything there, here, and waiting for you to be discovered. If you get it, you get it. If you don't it's no problem because probably the movie is exciting. Uh, last question. Uh, so it's great to have a love, a love letter to Hong Kong yeah. at the moment. Mm -hmm. it's, it feels like it's very problematic, the situation mm -hmm. too. Yeah. What would, you, what would you say about that? You know, in 1967, I was 20 years old. I feel that uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, um, there was uh, this uh, riot in Hong Kong. 
but uh, this riot is coming from a force of the north mm. and it then came to Hong Kong and it de becomes a big uh, uh, riot in Hong Kong and uh, then uh, the police in Hong Kong and uh, together with uh, the British uh, army they try to stop uh, these riots but it was uh, not uh, uh, very uh, useful and so you have the curfew and the things like that but then six months later this force just disappeared miraculously just disappeared and uh, then 52 years later now we have another unknown force I would say a known force that came from we don't know where and then people walk on the street and then demonstrating and then become riots again and uh, it's very sadly that is in the name of uh, freedom human rights and the democracy and then it became violent and I feel very sad for it and then it's like the Pandora box has been opened and all the vice came out of the Pandora box people think differently and the society was differently and uh, the young people they are different but then the Pandora box according to the myth there's still hope inside and so I certainly do hope that the hope will come out and the Hong Kong people will feel a better tomorrow and uh, then reconstruct Hong Kong. That's wonderful. Well, uh, on that note, I think uh, I thank you very much for joining us and talking to us about your film. It was a great pleasure. Thank you. And this is Fred Film Radio, the Festival Insider. <laughs>